It's the 2K Sports Free Game Show. Hello, basketball fans. I'm Ernie Johnson, welcoming you to 2K Sports. I'm here with Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Tonight, we'll be watching the Minnesota Timberwolves playing against the Chicago Bulls. Wins have been hard to come by lately for this Bulls group. They haven't forgotten the fact that this team swept them last year in the regular season. This is a game they had circled going in. And with All-Star Week almost upon us, people getting ready for the excitement. But Kenny, for teams on hot streaks, does this actually come at a kind of a, at a bad time? They say, hey, we don't want to stop playing. No, you never like to stop, honestly, Ernie, when the momentum is being positive. But you need a break. And this is truly a great break, so it shouldn't hurt too much. And for these teams on the cold streaks, <laughs> Ernie, they welcome the break. Mental reset for the second half of the year is desperately needed. Mm. You talk about a mental reset desperately needed. <laughs> Look <laughs> right here, boys and uh, girls. You took a Look shot at right shot? here. Did you That's just take a shot at Shaq? I shot at both of you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I blocked mine. At least I caught it. We take your court side. Thanks for joining us. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave the land of the free and the home of the It's a West versus East contest here in the Windy City of Chicago, Illinois, as the Bulls play one at home. 2K Sports is proud to present NBA Basketball. And our broadcast team tonight, Greg Anthony here to my left and Steve Smith to my right, and the Hall of Famer David Aldridge along the sideline. For the Timberwolves, this is the last game before heading back to Minnesota. No question they've got this game penciled in as a win, but they still have to go out and make plays. They'll look to take an early lead and try to get this one over early. Kim, this team has been a total surprise. A lot of people didn't feel they could be this good. The, the sum of the total far better than the individual parts, and that's been evident with this group. And David Aldridge is standing by for our pregame report. David, good evening. Thank you, Kevin. Now, Jimmy Butler survived a tough upbringing in Tomball, Texas. He said, that's all anybody ever wanted to talk about. But I don't want that to define me. If I'm stuck in the past, then I won't get any better. I won't change. I'll get stuck as that kid. That's not who I am. I'm a great basketball player because of my work. Guys. Thanks, David. You can tell Butler has a good head on his shoulders. An elite talent in this league because of the hard work he puts in. And as he approached that midway point of the season, Steve, the pecking order pretty clear. Is it possible for a team to suddenly kick into a high gear and forget what's happened the first half and be completely different the second half of the season? You know, sometimes a tweak of the lineup, a guy has been out because of injury, or a huge trade can definitely kickstart a lot of teams, and you just start to play better. But one thing is, when you start to hit that chemistry, that continuity, and everything is clicking, the unselfishness, yes, you can. You can have it happen in the midseason. So the Timberwolves win the tip. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's check out who's on the floor, courtesy of Gatorade. On the court for Minnesota. Wiggins at small forward with Gibson at the four. Teague runs the point with Butler at his side. They're the backcourt. And it's Towns in at the five spot. And so it's the Minnesota Timberwolves getting the first points of the ball game. And the dunk by Lopez. When Lopez gets in that close, it's tough to stop him from slamming it home. Right side Teague, shoots over Grant. They get the rebound, here's Towns. And that one's drained from the low block. Towns has got his second bucket tonight. A terrific offensive rebounder. Here he is, doing it again. And Levine, here we go. And it's off the back rim, no good. Timberwolves have gone two or three here to start out the game. 
Here's Towns. No good on that one. Good D by Lopez. On defense, the Timberwolves. Tough loss coming against Cleveland in their last game play. Yeah, I just thought their energy was lacking defensively. Just gave up way too many easy shots. You know what? That's a problem anytime, but especially on the road where you need to be given an extra effort. Tough screen set there, and the defense was not prepared for it. Here's Gibson. Markinen pulls it in. I'm a fan of anybody who defends that way. I mean, they weren't about to open the door and just allow him to cruise in for a layup. That's nice patience by Zach Levine, finding the open man, not trying to do it all himself. You have to credit the pinpoint pass for making that play possible. The Bulls have gone three of four from the field to start out the game. Grant dishes to Lopez. They double him with Wiggins. Levine wide open. From outside, off the mark. Let's it go from 14. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. You know we talk about it all the time, guys. Those second chance buckets, always the result of that extra effort. First quarter of ball, almost two and a half minutes in. There's the three. Again, Levine missing. Timberwolves have gone 50% from the field to this point, four of eight. And it's Gibson finishing it off. Gibson with those long arms, always on the prowl to slam it home. Here's Grant, nine points last game out. And Teague, here we go. That one falls, his second basket of the game. He's now two for three. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring effectively from the paint. Now, here's Grant. A look at his stats. He averages a bit over eight points a game. Kick out to Levine. Six to shoot. Markinen sets the pick for Levine. Over Gibson. Again, Levine missing. Look, that's in his range, but he had a defender right up in his chest. Good! Every time they get scored on during this run, it's come from inside the paint. The Timberwolves shooting their first free throw of the night here. And typically, a strength of theirs, 79% on the season. One shot. That's good from Gibson. I just love the way Gibson plays the game. Defensive-minded, willing to do whatever it takes. It's easy to see why his teammates respect him. Now, here's Markinen. Looking for his first basket still in this one. That is some tough defense there against one of the better finishers in our game. Well, whenever you watch the Bulls, you can't help but think back to their golden age. I remember those days. The 90 Bulls are arguably one of the best teams ever. Hard to argue with the greatness of those teams. And, Smitty, you got to play against Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen in the 90s. Just what was it like uh, going up against them during their peak as a team? A nightmare. The reason why you had two wing defenders in Jordan and Pippen who could guard the basketball. And then you had both those guys that were excellent on offense. And at the end of the game, they had the greatest closer of all time, in my opinion, in MJ. On the free throw, no good. I love the complimentary aspect of this group now. You know, you've got the young talent, but you've brought in some veteran leadership here for the Timberwolves. The duo of Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns kind of gave... Oh! oh about that athletic. Way yeah. up there. And guys, they've come out and established a rhythm. And also their play calling has been on point. Well, the two go hand in hand. 
Matching your strategy to your personnel is key. And the first time out of the game called for Chicago. Outplayed in the previous game on their schedule, losing to Sacramento. And it's a tough game to lose. I mean, they actually put up a pretty solid effort, I thought. But when you're battling for a road win, even when you play hard, nothing's guaranteed. You always want to try to steal as many games away from home as you can. They just came up short there. With a quick break on the court, we've got some time to show you the list of the top rookie shot blockers over the course of the last month. Lowry Markin in third. He's been a factor on the inside. An impressive stretch for him defensively. Bulls trail by 12. Grant kicks to Lopez. Lopez a screen to the inside. No good, unable to end this run. Here's Minnesota. Here's Towns, and the dunk by Towns. Yeah, I don't know if you can do it any better on both ends than they have tonight. It's early, but they have taken full control of this game, and the fans here, they know it. Teague on the double team. It's stolen by Teague. And here we go. Oh, oh goodness. Wow. Terrific. And one great play leads to another with Teague. His fast hands and fast feet making things happen. Holiday with it. He's got five. Pope loose. Towns with the steal. And the dunk by Towns. And the point differential tells the story. Their two-way play has been outstanding. You know, it's a matter of effort plus talent. You need both to dominate this way. That's tipped. And Butler here. Oh, oh. yes. Put this guy in the dunk contest. Jimmy Butler is ready to win it all. Bulls trail by 20. Now, here's Grant. He hasn't scored yet. That, I'm sure, will change. They double him with Butler. Shot clock at six. Markinen kicks to Grant. The long distance three is buried. I'm sure he didn't have the green light to pull the trigger from out there, but he sunk it anyway. What a shot. He gets it in there. Six points for Andrew Wiggins. And really focused on establishing dominance down low. And guys, it's working. They have played physical. They have owned the paint. And they have built up a decent lead here in the first. And here is Grant, 11 feet away. Holiday with another miss. On the wing, Wiggins, guarded by Holiday. Offensive rebound, Towns, banked in off the glass. Towns has got 14 points for the game. And that's 10 straight points in the paint. The defense, nowhere to be found. And out of bounds as the Bulls gain possession. Now a chance, guys, to examine the rebounding numbers over the past months for Gibson. And those are some numbers that he can't be happy about. His rebounding totals have taken a dip over the past few months. He's got to get back to giving the kind of effort on the boards we were seeing from him earlier. Bulls trail by 21. Al Levine. He had a 27-point outing in their last game against Sacramento. The putback. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second-chance points. You love the way Robin Lopez just goes after those missed shots. That's where he can do damage. Wiggins. And there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul. Shot misses. He'll be shooting two. And Chicago called for the foul. And still 
varying opinions out there of, of what Andrew Wiggins can and can't do. <laughs> but one thing that's indisputable, he's an incredible scorer. Uh, it, whether it's half-court transition, he can flat out fill it up in a hurry. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. That free throw, no good. And Wiggins, his young career just getting better and better at scoring, Greg, while increasing his workload. Yeah, and, and very few scorers can do that, especially from that two-guard spot. Uh, Wiggins has that special talent where he can flat-out carry an offense. Scary to think that this is a kid who is just scratching the surface. He hits the second from the line. Bulls trail by 20. In the corner, Valentine with it. Kept alive. And on the glass so far, it hadn't even been close. And Wiggins throws it down. And guys, he's not an easy man to stop when he's got the rim in his sights. Never has been, never will be. He is a determined finisher. Time called here. The Bulls decide to talk it over. And there are so many amazing players in the league right now, Smitty, when you look at some of the guys who came in since you retired. Who would you like to have played with or played against? I think with, it would have been a treat to play alongside of LeBron James. Um, ah, yeah. I think against, I think right now I would have loved to see uh, playing up against a guy like Giannis and Christoph Porzingis, just the different ways these guys affect the game at their size. Um, there's so many guys, and would love to get a chance to just be in front and marvel at watching Steph Curry go through what he's doing, and a Kyrie Irving. Right. There's so many guys, Kevin. Uh, I, went, I just wouldn't want to guard those guys. I'm going to just say play with all those guys, <laughs> not against. Yeah, and the amount of points they've given up here in the paint, that, that's what they got to talk about. You know, for the most part, their perimeter D is holding up, but they might have to sacrifice some of that to close down the lane. The Timberwolves making a change here. Jones has checked in. And now let's take a look at the stats for Zach Levine. How his last 10 games have gone. He's getting around 16 points a game, five rebounds, and two assists. And guys, he's making winning plays. It's as simple as that. Not a star player per se, but he makes his presence felt. And the numbers, they back it up. Whether he can sustain this level of production, we don't know. But the arrow's pointing upward right now. Passes it to Nwaba. Here's Portis, guarded by Crawford. Portis kicks to Valentine. And some nice ball movement here by Chicago. They double him with Wiggins. Five on the clock. Down low. Here's Nwaba. It's tipped. And now Minnesota on the fast break. And finished off by Jang. And so far, they have been in complete control of this one. Just a well-rounded effort on the road. You know what they've done? They've been aggressive on both ends. That's showing up on the scoreboard. Lopez, a screen on Jones. Here's Levine. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. And certainly while the injury for Zach Levine and his ACL was devastating, Greg, it's good to see him back on the court, and he seems to be on track to making a full recovery. And Kevin, still amazing to me to see just how far the medical community has come in terms of treating ACL injuries. Uh, uh, Levine is such an athletic monster. To lose even a little burst would have been huge. Fortunately, though, with modern medicine, it's going to allow this guy to make the most of his potential still. And the first one at the line is good. I mean, thinking back to where Levine was drafted, 13th overall, raised some eyebrows, but it was all about upside. Chicago making a switch here. Lonley's checked in. And so Levine nails both of them. 
And one of the pieces of the Jimmy Butler trade this offseason, Zach Levine finds himself as a prime building block for a rebuilding team. The Bulls see him as a star of the future. And rightfully so, even given the fact that he's recovering from the ACL surgery. Levine is young and can grow his game with the team. Hard to get fair value for a player of Butler's ability, but, but Levine is a great place to start. Wiggins passes to Jang, the 11-footer, and it's Chicago with the rebound. This their first chance to take a look at the Timberwolves this season. And this is a matchup that can frustrate them as they came up empty in their two games against them last year. And the foul called on Tyus Jones. That is his first foul of the game. Here's Nwaba. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. The feet of Onle. Tries again. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. Now let's take a moment to see the teams that lead the league in field goal percentage. In fourth, the Timberwolves. So patient on the offensive end. I mean, they're not going to force shots, and it's that selectiveness that's yielded such an impressive field goal percentage. He's off on the first. And you think back to just a few years ago when the Bulls were winning the East. That team, core of Rose, Noah, and Dang, had some tough luck not to make it to the finals with that group. So he comes up empty at the line. And with those Rose-led Bulls teams from a few seasons back, it all went south so fast, but those teams were very tough to beat. It just shows you how much can change in the NBA in a short span. Bulls are working hard to try to get back to that level. It hasn't been an easy road. Here's Levine and the rejection by Jang. And he's been way off the mark this quarter. It, it's been ugly. And that one's good. Wiggins moving it around. Eight of their last ten coming off assists. The Bulls shooting a pretty distressing 27% here in the early minutes. They set the pick. Dishes it to Vonley. And there's the three-second call, this one on the defense. Chicago shooting their fifth free throw of the game here. And the technical free throw is good. You know, Smitty, you had a long career. What was it, 14, 15 seasons you played for the Spurs who've led the way on resting players and certainly extending their careers. Yeah, it is, Kevin, but it's hard for me because I look at it as from a fan standpoint. When I played and now, you know, you have that kid and his dad come into the game and he doesn't get a chance to see that star player. And a lot of times there's two or three guys that sit out. I understand the rest is needed because it's a long term, but I wish guys could find a way and coaches to have an organization, maybe have rest days as far as practice, but let the guys play because kids want to see their stars play. Right, but in the middle of your career, are you thinking, hey, I want to play long term so this rest is good? Or are you saying, forget the rest, I want to play? I just want to play. I mean, I think one thing is I never thought about long term. I just wanted to play the game that was in front of me, the practice that was in front of me, the preseason game that was in front of me. You just wanted to play. Levine kicks to Portis. He dishes it to Valentine. And again, no good by Chicago. I mean, he's struggling, hitting a low percentage of his shots this quarter. And the shot is good. I mean, if you're looking to get back into this game, you have to get tougher defensively. From the arc. That shot, no good. The Timberwolves go the other way with it. I can't believe he hasn't hit a shot all period. Someone else needs to step up and help close the gap. Yeah, and he runs the floor with a purpose that time. Excellent play. You know what? And a late reaction by the transition D takes it himself uncontested. To stop the run, Waba gets the bucket. 
Dwaba has got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. Oh, a good open look, and he sprays it home from three. Muhammad, no luck. And for the Bulls, they're shooting a pretty distressing 27% here in the early minutes. Waba kicks to Levine. And the Bulls, another three. Great play to run for Zach. Off ball, he's quick to catch and elevate. That's in. He's got two made now, and he's shooting two for three. And the crisp passing has opened things up for them offensively. Here's Nwaba taking a look at his numbers. He averages about seven points a game. Balls knocked loose. Crawford with the steal. Goes up and finished off by Jang. Well, there you go. One team operating on all cylinders at both ends. Steals, fast break buckets, and, and the other team in scramble mode. Here's Von Ley. And released it in time, but it's off the mark. And so it's Minnesota leading by a full 31 points at the end of the quarter. And they're winning the turnover battle very easily in this one. And we've got more NBA action on 2K Sports coming your way after this break. And a guy who seems to improve every season, Jimmy Butler. He spoke with us about one of his biggest surprises. It's crazy because I never thought that anybody would be preparing to guard me night in and night out. But they do. I have to um, learn to cope with that and still find a way to be um, successful on both ends of the floor. And it's a learning curve for me also, but I'm, I'm figuring it out. And hard to doubt the dedication of Jimmy Butler. He's found a way to overcome obstacles at each important point along the way. You know, he's a self-made player. And if Butler can stay healthy, boy, the sky's the limit. Welcome back, everyone. A lopsided first quarter in the books already as we start the second quarter. And guys, we've seen a confident-looking Timberwolves team out there. I tell you, on fire all period long. And this is how you want to start the game. They build up a monster lead on the heels of great shooting. Love the attack mindset here. On the court for the Timberwolves as our second quarter is underway. They've got Gorgie Dang. Shabazz Muhammad is out there with Bialica. Then it's Crawford and it's Jones in at the one. Here's Nwaba. Pass to Von Ley. And Jones pulls it down. And a big lead for them on both the scoreboard and the backboard thus far. The execution on point. Just terrific timing on these passes. You know what? Controlling the pace. Being patient. Great vision. We're seeing it all tonight. And for the Timberwolves, they're shooting an almost unfair 78% from the field. Now let's go to the sideline and catch up with our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, Carl Anthony Towns was voted by GMs last season as the player they most want to build a franchise around. But he is not resting on his laurels. He said, I work hard on my game. I want to be the strongest player, the most intelligent player, and the most skilled player on the court at all times. Kevin? Thanks, What's David. Up? That work ethic will definitely help Towns get better. He's already a dynamite player. The NBA has so many incredible ball handlers in the league right now. Steve, you think of guys like Kyrie Irving, maybe the best handle that I've ever seen, and, and certainly Steph Curry. But Jamal Crawford is right up there with the best of them. He, he plays with the ball on a string. Yeah, you're totally right. Jamal Crawford, longevity-wise and tricks of the trade when handling the basketball, Mind the he lanes. can embarrass Mind you. The lanes. Jamal Crawford What's loves up? to use his handles, and he's a showman out there.
Free throw good. Crawford. Smitty, you call college basketball games as well. We know you had a terrific career in East Lansing with Michigan State. We're starting to hear from some players, Ben Simmons for one, critiquing the college basketball system for the financial setup and the, the stringent eligibility rules. Do you give any credence to these complaints? Is the kid right? Uh, what changes you think might be made? It's a loaded question with a lot of uh, answer, I'm sure, to it. But it, it's certainly on the tip of a lot of people's tongue right now. And I think it should be. You've had some coaches coming out and saying there's some kind of way to be able to change this system and be able to benefit some of these players. I look at it some way, Kevin, where there's some kind of way you have an insurance policy for these guys or some kind of way that they're be able to finish their degree, even go on to finish their master's degree as long as they want from any college, not just the college they came from. But I also think some kind of way there should be some kind of financial stipend for these guys. And Muhammad throws it down. Well, the pace, the big plays they're making, this is a statement run right here. Hard to remember the last time they've missed. These guys are having fun right now. Waba passes to Vonley. He kicks to Grant to stop the drought. And he sinks the layup. Grant's got his second bucket of the night. And really, it's been a major aspect of their offense in the early stages here. Their success working the ball inside and getting points from close range. Guys, he's having a ball out there. I mean, we knew going in that he'd have an advantage on the glass, but I didn't think he could be this dominant. What a difference. And he's not going to back off. Even with that big lead, he's going to get more motivated to keep stretching out their lead. Portis. That three off the mark. For Minnesota, they've gotten nearly everything to fall for them here in the second quarter. They're a great 7 of 8 from the floor. Oh, great ball movement there. Here's Grant. He has five. Pass to Zipser. And some nice ball movement here by Chicago. The dish now to Vonley. Here's Nwaba, guarded by Crawford. Here's Zipser. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. And just over three and a half minutes played here in the second quarter. Here's Muhammad, and Muhammad throws it down. And no doubt they've been the more efficient team in this first half. Because they've been patient, they're finding good shots. That's why they've hit a much higher percentage from the floor. Waba kicks to Zipser. And the Bulls, another three. And they're getting their points now almost exclusively from the triple. Four of their last five makes are from beyond the arc. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. Waba kicks to Grant. They set the pick. Down low. And Vonley with the basket on the assist by Grant. Vonley's got his first basket of the night. You've got to give a ton of credit to the screener. That play easily opened up the easy layup for his teammate. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. Grant kicks to Portis. That's tipped. And now the Timberwolves on the break. It's Bialica. Rips down the breakaway slam. And we talk about this a lot. Turnovers leading to transition points. I love the anticipation right there for the pick. Then he wastes no time getting up court. Grant against Jones. Bonley's shot is good. Bonley's got his second basket of the game. And they keep hammering away at him inside, forcing the ball into the paint. It's Bialica. Second chance shot, and it's laid in by Jang. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. There's a screen, and it's Mwaba missing. Yeah, you, you love the solid screen, but what you hate is just the inability to finish. You can see he's frustrated with that one. He knows it's up to him to make that play. Grant the pass to Portis. Here's Nwaba. Grant outside. Shot clock at five. A three-pointer off the mark. Rough start to this game. Hits one bucket in the first and nothing here in the second. Again, the miss by Jones. For Chicago, they've gone five of 11 from the field since the beginning of the second quarter. And it's Grant in the corner. 
Traps in the tray. Grant's got five points now this quarter. Yeah, that's too good a look to give him from behind the arc. Took him no time at all on that one. How about the quarter he's having? Tremendous execution on the offensive end, helping to further fuel this lead. And the pass to Zipser. No good on the triple. Timberwolves shooting the lights out in this one, 77%. You look at that lead pass there. He just has such a great feel for the game. Grant with the ball. Jones covering. Over in the corner, Portis. He feeds it to Vonley. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. That one on Muhammad. For Chicago, they have made three of five free throw attempts. Two shots. Relax on the first. He throw good, Bonley, so for the Bulls. Lopez, he's checked in for Portis. Markinen comes in for Paul Zipser. And Justin Holliday is subbed in for David Mwaba. And both free throws good for Vonley. Wiggins dishes to Gibson. That falls. Ice feed that time from Wiggins. Seven points for Taj Gibson. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. They get a hand on it. Some solid defense from Grant. Now Chicago has gotten half their shots from three-point range to go down in the second quarter. Three of six from downtown. To the middle. Goes back up. Lopez. And he makes good on the layup. Lopez has got six points. Great concentration from Lopez to absorb the contact and finish the playoff anyway. Here's Grant. Minnesota with the rebound. Towns has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. He can't get it to go. Good D by Lopez. Bulls have gone 7 of 16, shooting just under 50% here in the second quarter. The Timberwolves shooting has been sensational, 75% for the game. And Towns gets it to go. A beautiful ball movement by Jimmy Butler, constantly looking to set up his guys. They set the pick. Here's Towns, and the dunk by Towns. Oh, quick hands <laughs> on the steal, and then just mad hops on the slam. Great sequence for them, defensively and offensively. Terrific defensive instincts to come away with that one, and he showed no hesitation in how he completed that transition opportunity. Grant kicks to Holiday. Feeds it to Markinen. Six on the shot clock. Holiday with it. Now guarded by Towns. The shot by Holiday, no good. And the Timberwolves with possession here. They host the Kings after this game, and that's the first game in a string of three straight at home. Ah, nice move inside. Has the defender beat, just fails to finish. Oh, and here we go with Gibson. Nobody back. And it's Gibson finishing it off. And the steal then, right into the fast break. Great awareness. Perfect, perfect read. Takes a chance, certainly pays off. Now the Bulls with it. Holiday, the pass to Markinen. The three-pointer, no good. So the Timberwolves call their first timeout. And really, one of the quickest guards in our league. Jeff Teague just puts tremendous pressure on your defense when he's attacking the paint. And the book on T, Greg, is to make him an outside shooter. You don't want him getting to the rim. I mean, he's a good finisher around the rim. His outside shooting, although streaky at times, not bad, but not great either.
so for the Bulls. Valentine comes in for Vonley, and Zach Levine subbed in for Grant. The Timberwolves shooting has been out of this world, 74% from the field. 11 feet away, and that one comes up a bit short. Chicago's gone for the three-pointer seven times here in the second and been successful three times. Valentine with it, Butler covering. And there's the call on Carl Anthony Towns. That's his first foul. On defense, the Timberwolves. Lopez a screen. Levine dishes to Holiday. Still no rhythm. This may be a time when you want to make the extra pass. Give someone else a chance. Really left alone that time. 15 points for Andrew Wiggins. And there's one thing that's never been in question about Wiggins. His ability to be a high volume scorer. And in case you needed a reminder, he's giving you one tonight. Yeah, another missed opportunity. And, and you can just see the frustration. He wants to help his team. But when you're in position to finish, it's hard to turn that down. And when you can outscore your opponent in transition, that's always going to work to your advantage. The reason why a number of guys on this roster, they are built for speed. Why not play to your strengths? Levine with it. He's got seven. And there's the call. It's going to be an illegal screen. Yeah, still moving a little bit when he set that screen. He'll argue that he was set, but I, I really didn't think so. That's the modern-day NBA. Complain about the call and hope the next one goes your way. And Towns gets it to go. And I need to see some more assertiveness out of these defenders. The Bulls shooting just 31% in the game. Valentine kicks to Markinen. Down low, here's Lopez. Count that as his fourth basket of the night. Just seven shots to get there. Making a dent in this deficit. He's been on point tonight. Here's Towns, so he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up, and two shots coming up. It's on Lowry Markinen. And for a player with his size, Towns has always been very comfortable at the free throw line. And that's a good thing because he finds himself there quite a bit. And he's got his first free throw of the game. Listen, 84 is a really good number to post at the foul line, and that's where he's at on the year. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. The first one falls. Well, Towns does so many things on the floor. Already an elite post score. But, Greg, one area that he has struggled with at times is his defense against other bigs. And I think he'll continue to improve in that area. What happens with young guys, though, is oftentimes you're improved how good I am mode when you're young and you lose sight of some of the things that help you win games. And I think that's one reason why he had one of the worst defensive RPMs in the entire league. But young bigs tend to take a bit longer to develop into great defenders, and I expect he will follow in that line. Well, check out that assist. That's a pair of teammates that are clearly on the same page. And Teague knew that he would be open there. Great patience and vision from the point man. Levine passes to Valentine. There's a good screen. Kicks to Lopez. The putback. Great positioning on the putback. You know, he had a hot start to this game. He's only gotten hotter. We'll see if the defense makes an adjustment. And Towns gets it to go. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Shot and game clock separated by five. Tipped away. Towns with the steal. All alone. Oh, and the jam by Towns. Just a great job there from Teague to locate where his teammate was and get the ball to him on time. Now here's Levine. He's got seven, and there's the call on Carl Anthony Towns. That's foul number two for him. Here's Holiday. 20 points for him last game against Sacramento. Gibson with the steal. Two on the clock. 
It's deflected. And how about marketing using his size and reach on defense? Great timing in terms of being able to get up and block shots. And the teams are going to have to wait before heading to the locker room. They're going to bring out the monitor and see if he got that shot off in time. And even though, you know, you're thinking maybe we don't need the replay in a situation like this, still plenty of time left in this game. And really, it's about getting the call right. And they're keeping the call as is. It was close, but he had not released it before the clock had expired. Yeah, still better safe than sorry. I think they did the right thing to take another look at it. And if it's so close that you can't tell by the naked eye, might as well go to the slow-mo. And so it's the Minnesota Timberwolves with a huge lead at the break. Safe to say there's no catching them today. Their defense has been terrific in this game. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin, with Carl Anthony Towns. Carl, you got some scoring going in that first half. What did you take advantage of? Uh, I'm just finding spots. I'm not chasing it. That didn't come to me. Uh, just using what my teammates give me. Productive half so far, Carl Anthony. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David, for that interview, and we'll see you back here after the break for third quarter basketball. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, everybody. Ernie Johnson joined by Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome to the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. Been working out. What a start it was for Carl Anthony Towns. He ended up with 28 points, four steals, and one assist. And uh, Kenny, what did you see out there from the Timberwolves? Well, they were dishing out dimes left and right, and the guys were finishing strong. As a team, they seem to be always thinking, always looking for the best shot. If they keep sharing the ball this way, the second half could be more lopsided than the first. How about you, Shaq? What did you think about Chicago? The first thing to say is, what's up with the turnovers? Jeez. You can live with some missed shots and stuff like that, but you can't keep turning the ball over. It's crushing for a team. It just saps all your confidence when you play a half like that, Ernie. Ugh. And that is just about going to wrap it up as the second half is moments away. Down to Kevin Harlan and the rest of the crew. Welcome back, everybody. Third quarter just about to get going here in what has been so far a runaway game. Earl Anthony Towns has been sensational. Well, what we saw in the first half, he has a nice mixture of moves down low, and they've been going to him. He is reliable down there. Once he gets going, he is a machine. And as we begin the second half, first half wasn't even close, guys, and we'll see if there is a comeback on our hands or more of the same as we get the third quarter started. Arkinen and Lopez are together down low. Zach Levine is out there with Grant, and it's Holiday in at the three. And that's the group for Fred Hoiberg as we begin the second half. Misses the three. Minnesota shooting has been out of this world 74% from the field. Puts it up from 15 and off the front iron, and in it goes. Gibson's got the first points to start out the third quarter for the Timberwolves. Into the Bulls, uh, you know, shooting about 33%, not happy with their play on that end. The shot by Markinen, nobody around. Good on the three point shot. Markinen's got his first three points of the game. How about the soft touch there for Markinen? A, a dangerous weapon on offense, constantly looking for ways to score. And for those of you turning in, we're about a minute into the second half. Grant dishes to Levine. No good that time. Great D that time from Gibson. Here's Butler. That falls. Ice feed that time from Wiggins. I love the aggressiveness by Butler when he's driving the basketball to the bucket. Chicago's gone one of two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. You think back when Fred Horryberg was a player in the NBA, great shooter who had a strong knowledge of the game. Not too surprised he ended up as a coach. 
That's one for their first four to start the second half. And Wiggins throws it down. And on the defensive side, just a failure to match up. Well, the one thing you want to take away is anything at the rim. Just too easy. Grant kicks to Markinen. On the wing, Levine. Lopez, a screen on Butler. Here's Markinen. Nailed from three-point land. Markinen's got six. And Smitty, you and Hoiberg played against one another during your careers and even guarded each other, I think, from time to time. What was it like going up against a player like him? You know, Kevin, he must have been real young because I'm so old. I don't even remember that. But I do know and remember Fred Hoiberg and watching him coach. He is a fast decision maker. Also would find space as a player. And you see some of his strengths as a player and how he designs his offense right now. No good from outside. Hard to figure out how he doesn't knock that one down. No defender in sight. No good from Gibson. And this is one of those times where the coach has got to preach, be unselfish. And we don't know that he hasn't. Maybe it's been falling on deaf ears. Guys taking ill-advised jump shots. A little undersized at the four, but he can get off the ground. Three minutes gone now in the third quarter. Chicago's gone a less than productive two of six from three-point land in the second half. Grant the pass to Levine. There's the feed to Markinen. Back to Levine. Down to five on the shot clock. Too long in the paint, and he's hit with a three-second violation. The Bulls have had seven opportunities at the free throw line and made good on five of them. At the line for the Bulls, one shot. One shot, gentlemen. And so he hits the technical free throw. And Markinen is showing the aggressiveness you like to see in a guy with his skill set. Somebody who doesn't lack confidence when he shoots the ball. Grant outside. Passes it to Holiday. Six on the shot clock. Lopez, a screen on Towns. Shot off the screen. Lopez controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. You gotta put a body on Lopez or he'll put those right back in every time. No brainer. Here's Towns and the dunk by Towns. His teammates recognize that he has the hot hand going. That's why they get him the ball every chance they get. And here is Grant. He's got eight outside Holiday. Lopez sets a screen for Holiday. And there's the call on Carl Anthony Town. That's his third foul of the game. Chicago making a switch here. Zipser's checked in. Arkin in with it. Now guarded by Gibson. Here's Zipser. And he's good on the three ball. Zipser's got his third basket of the night right there. They've given up a lot of three pointers here today. Here's Butler. Here's Gibson. Shakes off the strong D and gets to the bucket for two. Oh, they own the interior right now. Ten straight points coming from inside. Grant dishes to Markinen. Zipser kicks to Levine. Lopez, a screen on Gibson. For three, Levine. It's rebounded by Towns. Towns has got double-digit rebounds now in the game. He just can't get it cranked up from beyond the arc. No threes in this half after just hitting one in the first. Shots good by Gibson. Just no resistance on the inside. That's their fifth consecutive make in the paint. Lopez sets a screen for Grant. Pass to Zipser. Good on the triple. Zipser's got 12 points in the game. And since halftime, they have been locked and loaded from beyond. Yeah, forcing defenders to come out and guard them, which could open up driving lanes if they want to take advantage of that. I tell you, he's playing the game with pure excitement right now. He capped off that dunk with some serious hang time on the rim. 
And Jeff Teague coming over to the Timberwolves in free agency. Greg, the team felt he was the perfect fit. You know, and, and it seemed for a while the Wolves had wanted to kind of mix things up at that point guard position. And you knew they had someone in mind when they dealt both Rubio and Dunn in the offseason. Teague was their man all along. Now Grant, eight points for him. Lopez, a screen on Teague. Marking it in the corner. A three ball. Another three for Chicago. Out of their last five makes, how about all five from long range? Here's Gibson. That's good. And so Teague with the assists. Teague's got nine assists now tonight. Yeah, three consecutive field goals have come right at the rim. The D had better start buckling down. Here's Markinen, and it's off the back rim. No good. And that's the look this offense is designed to produce. Always frustrating when you do everything right, yet just can't complete the play. A nice job of converting, but what really makes this play? The league pass. For Minnesota, they have had seven opportunities at the free throw line and made good on five of them. Bobby Portis has checked in for Chicago. Valentine comes in for Zach Levine. One shot, find the lanes. That's good from Gibson. Bulls have gone 7 of 15 from the field here in the third quarter. Markinen sets the pick for Valentine. And there's the foul. Goes on Taj Gibson. That's his first foul. Teague against Grant. Dishes to Markinen from the arc. Minnesota with the rebound. Teague's got his fifth rebound in this one. Here's Towns. He shoots again, and it's good on the way in. And that's now 30 points for Taj Gibson. Yeah, what a quarter for him. Flying on all cylinders, putting this team in a good place. Here's Markinen. Hits it from three-point range. That's a dozen straight points coming off the triple. And it's Towns penetrating. Count it. Towns has got 32 points in the game. They're doing a really good job of getting the ball inside and attacking the paint. That's an area they have completely dominated. Grant with the ball. Picked up by Teague. Grant the pass to Portis. Rebound by Butler. Butler's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Here's Wiggins, and it's Wiggins with the jam. You know, Jimmy Butler's drawing a lot of attention. Now the next thing for him to do, just pass it to the open guy. The Bulls shooting a meager 37% for the game. Here's Grant. He's got eight. They set the pick. Lock at six. Here's Portis, defended by Towns. A rebound by the Timberwolves. And you could tell he thought that triple was going to fall. And Wiggins throws it down. And really the story of the half, one team shooting it lights out. The other, the lights are just out. You know what is two competing philosophies. One team playing it close to the vest, the other fast and loose. Markinen sets the pick for Grant. Valentine wide open. He fires off target with his three. It's been all Timberwolves. Butler kicks to Gibson, and it's Gibson finishing it off. And when Gibson gets on a roll, look out. So good at taking high-quality shots when he has room. Pass to Markinen. Valentine with it, looking for his first basket still in this one. And again, Chicago, no good. They've been doing a great job of sharing the ball. And guys, shot A comes to mind for me because right now that offense, it's a smooth operator. <laughs> and with Teague's speed, his pull-up jumper is so tough to guard. Grant against Towns. And the whistle blows on the backcourt violation. He went over and back. And we'll examine here how the distribution has been between three-pointers and two-pointers tonight for the Bulls. 
And the distribution there showing a lot of three-point attempts. And not that it's a bad thing, but we'll see if they can continue at this rate. Tips it up, and Teague is right there. Teague's got four points in the quarter. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Grant kicks to Markinen. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the contact. And Markinen is skilled at drawing fouls once he establishes position. Uses that height to get the defense to commit. And this will be his second and third shots at the line here. Shooting two. He's off on the first. David Mwaba is checked in for Chicago. Big group substitution now for Minnesota. Jang, he's checked in for Carl Anthony Towns. Biel Itza comes in for Taj Gibson. Shabazz Muhammad's checked in for Andrew Wiggins. And it's Crawford in for Butler. And the second free throw, good. Timberwolves shooting has been out of this world. 74% from the field. Teague inside the line. And some very quick points for him on that possession. Teague's got 10. I, I love his shot selection today. He set the bar for the rest of the team. Doubled by Crawford. Knocked loose. It's stolen by Teague. Crawford's shot is good. Seven points in the game. The Bulls shooting a troubling 38% in the third. Not the finest work of this offense. Back to Grant. There's the screen. Crawford with the steal. And here we go. Teague heading to the hoop. Score the basket. It's number six for him this game. Six for nine. 67% shooting. I love the adjustments he's made here in the second half. Getting the looks he wants now. And shooting a much higher percentage. Grant against T. And the call will be against Jeff T. That is his first foul of the game. Justin Holliday's checked in for Grant. Minnesota also with the sub. Jones has checked in. There's a minute 34 left in the third quarter. Out left to the wing. Shot clock at six. A shot by Holiday. Nobody around. Cans it from downtown. Holiday's got his third basket of the night. Jang. And finished off by Jang. You know, didn't need two hands for that slam. One will do just fine. Uh, you're right. He can save the other hand for the next time. <laughs> Guaba passes to Portis. Chalk up two there. The beauty of the teardrop. Very difficult to really contest. And so it's Minnesota with it. Here's Jang. It's all in by the Bulls. Portis has got four rebounds now tonight. And Holiday kicks to Valentine. Tipped away. There's the pass to Portis. Off target with his three. It's been all Timberwolves. Here's Muhammad. And a big pounce off the rim, but it sinks right in. Muhammad's got 16. And a lot of teams avoid the mid-range jumper, but they seem to be using it well. Waba kicks to Markinen. Here's Valentine. The Bulls keep it alive. Just a really solid display there of rebounding. They've done it really all game. They pounded the glass every time down the floor, and it's clear that they want to win that rebounding battle. No, I tell you what, he earned his money on that foul. The Timberwolves have scored six points from their eight attempts at the line so far.
The first free throw is good. Muhammad hits them both. Here's Nwaba. And here we go, Muhammad heading to the hoop. And Muhammad throws it down. And that's the classic one-two punch right there. I mean, nice steal. And then how about the elevation, Kevin, on the finish? And great, nothing spurs some quick offense like a great play defensively. When your defense translates into offense, it's a beautiful thing. The three quarters of play all in the books, and this one all but over already. The Timberwolves on top, just dominating this one. And after a quick break, we're going to come right back with the start of the fourth quarter. And now we take a listen into the recent huddle from Tom Thibodeau. Defensively, make sure we're all getting rebounded. No second shot. In transition, everyone talking. No open threes in transition. And Tom Thibodeau wanting his team to pay particular attention to certain areas of their defense. Yeah, taking care of the defensive boards, allowing no easy baskets on the fast break. These are key elements in terms of you having success. And thanks again for joining us. Let's see what happens here in the fourth. On the court for Minnesota, they've got Muhammad. Bayelitsa is out there with Gorgi Dang. Then it's Jones, and it's Crawford at the shooting guard. Well, the league has long had a rookie orientation program. People rave about it. It continues to develop and evolve. More recently, Steve, they've created a program for players transitioning to retirement. This is an outstanding idea. What, what's important with that in your eyes? I'm glad you brought that up, Kevin. I think the rookie orientation should even start even earlier. I think it should start at the college sure, level. Not saying that everybody's going to make it to the NBA, but it helps you what they give you just in a game of life. And then transitioning to retirement, I think it should be the, the first day you sign that NBA contract, the transition should start. Because it could end with an injury, and obviously we know even if you play a lengthy career, in 10 or 12 years is over. Like, if you were going to talk to a young player, and, and, and if the player said, Steve, give me one thing that I need to remember as I go through my career, and then it ends, what's the one thing, piece of advice, you would feed to a young player about what's going to be at the end of this journey? Well, I think, first of all, there's a couple things, Kevin, and I have to answer. First, got to keep your value system. Second, financially, you got to understand is make it simple as possible. You're not going to be able to live on the same type of salary for the rest of your life. So if you have a contract, say $20 million, in a simple, simple way, divide that up for like 50 years because that's the, how much you're going to need to be able to live off on. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. And he's finally getting the feel from beyond. His second three of the half right there. Okay, two hands for safety. That's, that's what they say, right? Uh, that's right. He was ultra safe with that dunk, no question. The bull shooting has been wayward so far. Only 37% from the floor. Waba passes to Holiday. He dishes it to Vonley. Defended by Jones. There's the pick to the inside and sticking right with it gets the foul with the bucket and he'll go to the line tough screen set there and the defense was not prepared for it and the initial rules for the NBA include that six personal fouls is the magic number before you're done for the game it's been this way since you know who can remember but, but do you think six is the right number Steve for fouls uh, or would you like to see them raise or lower it? I definitely wouldn't want to see them raise it. I think seven would be too much. Uh, maybe if they lower it, that's a possibility. But right now, I think it's six. Maybe five. Maybe you can experiment during some preseason games or in summer league. But I think six should be the maximum. Free throw good. Von Ley. The Timberwolves have gotten all three of their shots to drop here in the fourth quarter. They came out of the break on a roll. And it's Belyitsa with the foul. That's his fourth foul of the contest. 
Now the Bulls with it. The Wizards on the road to face them after this game. That'll be the second of five straight played at home. Doubled by Crawford. Out of bounds. Minnesota takes possession. Minnesota shooting has been sensational. 75% for the game. Two points. That one goes. Muhammad's got 10 points in just the second half. Up by a bunch. He's still pushing the action, trying to impose his will. With this big of a deficit in the score, you think the losing team would be playing harder. No. Ooh. Oh, here he comes, and there he goes. Ugh, look at him punish that rim. And that replay is sponsored by Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment, giving us an excellent perspective on the play. Defended by Jones. Here's Mwaba. It's deflected. Jones kicks to Bialica. Jumps up, and the dunk by Muhammad. And how about that? What a sensational finish. Hey, you you got to be able to get some hang time to do that one. Bulls have gone two of three from the field to get the fourth quarter started. They set the screen to the paint. Minnesota with the rebound. Bialitz has got three rebounds so far in the game. Releases from 15, and that one comes up a bit short. Bull shooting has been wayward so far. Only 37% from the floor. It's stolen by Jones. Here's Crawford. And the layup is good after a nice lead pass. And there it is again. They get careless with the basketball, and immediately it costs them. The dish to Holiday, and the foul called on Jamal Crawford. That's his first foul. Chicago making a switch here. Levine's checked in. Around three minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. There's the screen. Out of bounds. Minnesota takes possession. Here's George's Hunt. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. And 10 of their last 12 coming off assists. And the Bulls with possession. Levine passes to Nwaba. Well, if you're just tuning in, welcome. We've got about three and a half minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. Shot to stop the run. Bondley's shot is good. And defensively, you've got to make a greater effort working over the screens. Yeah, he could have made a better choice. He left him an easy one. Let's see how he plays the next screen. Yeah, the aggressive D inside leads to a missed opportunity there. You know, he had terrific position. Does a good job of affecting the shot without fouling. Allowing no space for the shooter to get comfortable. Just terrific defense. What I love is he takes the right angle, affects the shot without fouling. Jones against Levine. It's stolen by Jones. Here's George's Hunt. It's rebounded by Von. The Bulls have gone three of six in the field so far in the fourth quarter. And it's Mwaba missing. And even without that three ball dropping for him, the defense should have done more on that last play. Here's George's Hunt. Tries again. He lays it in. And defensively, guys, they've been unable to shut down the middle. Chicago's gone one of two from three-point range here in the fourth. Knocks it loose. Here we go, all alone. Ooh. And on the defensive side, just a failure to match up. Well, the one thing you want to take away is anything at the rim. Just too easy. Levine kicks to Nwaba. Back to Levine. Out to the wing for three. The shot 
No good. And Minnesota now the other way. You know what? He's just stone cold right now. Really not sure if he's their best option offensively as they try to get back in this game. Doubled by Aldridge. And the foul on Cole Aldridge. That is his first foul of the game. And now only one away from being in the penalty. Paul Zipser, he's checked in for Chicago. Lock at six, feeds it to Levine. And the Bulls with another miss. Ah, he's trying to shoot his way out of this slump, but it's not to be. And the basket by Jones. And a high percentage look there, and he takes full advantage. Bumps up the lead. Yeah, the lead now is double digits. Some tricky matchups out there. Not a lot of solutions. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Jones. There's a screen for three. Levine bangs home the trifecta. And that even things out. He had a three early in the first half. Now gets one in the second. Second chance shot. Aldrich, no good. Well, Chicago has gone two of five on three-point shots since the end of the third quarter. Snatched away. And now Minnesota on the fast break. And Cole Aldrich with the slam. And that's the classic one-two punch right there. I mean, nice steal. And then how about the elevation, Kevin, on the finish? And, Greg, nothing spurs some quick offense like a great play defensively. When your defense translates into offense, it's a beautiful thing. Off the pick. And the shot is long. And he rushed that one, no doubt about it. The D out of position, you can see the frustration on his face. Muhammad, the pass to Bialitz, and stolen by Vonley. And Levine, here we go. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. The defense in a tough situation. They know Levine loves the jump shot, but he can also put it on the floor and take it to you. Shooting two. And he makes the first. And this is one of the things they need to keep doing in the second half to get this win. Keep knocking down those free throws. They've been sensational here at the line. Off on that one, so he goes one for two at the line. It's all in by the Bulls. Coming down the stretch here, holding the lead. you like him to be more efficient offensively. And there's the foul on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. Two shots. And the first one drops. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. The Timberwolves shooting very well right now. 52% in this fourth quarter. Here's Muhammad. Nice shot from 10 feet out. Muhammad's got 16 here in the second half. 
Yeah, the chemistry has been terrific. Really impressed with their offensive execution. That's tipped. And here we go, Muhammad heading to the hoop. And the dunk by Muhammad. And, and slams it home and gets some camera time on the end of it. He did. He, he spent a while up in that rim, didn't he? Chicago has gone two of five on three-point shots since the end of the third quarter. Valentine dishes to Vonley. Doubled by Aldridge. Kicks to Vonley. Six to shoot. Levine with it. Jones covering. The Timberwolves another fast break chance here. He saw the opportunity to get an easy bucket on the break and took advantage of it. And it's the Bulls with the ball. Levine kicks to Valentine. Back to Levine. Launches a three. Drills the three-pointer. Tough to challenge Levine out there. Big lift on his shot. And you must close out quicker on him. Elitza. And he banks in the layup. Elitza's got 22 points. Just impress with the teamwork out there. Setting the table for one another. Levine kicks to Valentine. Zipser, the pass to Valentine. Here's the screen. Count that bucket. 15 points for Noah Vonley. You've got to give a ton of credit to the screener. That play easily opened up the easy layup for his teammate. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Bulls will take it. Jamal Crawford, he's checked in for Minnesota. Bulls have gone 6 of 13, so just above 46% on their field goal attempts here in the quarter. Valentine kicks to Levine. Knocked away. And that one goes out of bounds. Last touch by Levine. Grant, he's checked in for Zach Levine. And the Timberwolves also making a change. Gorky Dang's checked in for Cole Aldrich. Minnesota's gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Jones for three, buries the long range jumper. I'll tell you, even though he's a question mark from range, you still have to defend him. Grant outside. I shake the screen for Grant. It's stolen by Jones. And he drops in the way up off the glass. Soft interior defense. You know he's going to be aggressive. Well, Chicago's gotten three of their six three-pointers to fall here in the fourth. Screened by Grant. Inside, Bonley. Terrific design on the pick play. And he lays it in. Bonley's got 11 in the second half. Minnesota's gone one of three from outside the arc since we've reached the fourth quarter. And finished off by Jang. Oh, fellas, that was a vicious two-hand monster slam. Guys, I don't think there was anyone who could have stopped him on that one. Grant kicks to Valentine. Back to Grant. A minute 42 left in the fourth quarter. Here we go, one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Jang. And finished off by Jang. Sharing the basketball. Plenty of guys talk about it, but not everyone does it. 136 left to play here in the fourth. Passes it to Zipser. The feed to Grant. And Jones over to help. Wanley kicks to Zipser. Got a piece of it. Yes, and, and, and with this one winding down, it's obvious to everyone who watched it. Just a total mismatch and a true show of strength for the Timberwolves. You don't see this kind of a blowout often, but tonight this is a quality win across the board to deliver out uh, this kind of punishment. They definitely never changed the approach. They just kept after it and showed they were clearly the better team in just about every single category.
And so now on the year, they'll have 35 wins to their credit. And so they win their first game against this squad. It's a two-game season series, and they'll be going for the sweep the next time they face off. And one of the key components to this victory, if not the biggest, was the incredible performance for Taj Gibson. And how many times throughout the course of the evening did he make a momentum-changing play? I thought his relentlessness really keyed their success. chance now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, Taj Gibson. And it's been a ridiculous performance in the best sense possible. I mean, everything about his game has been working. And no matter what they've thrown at him, he's had the answer. And they were in danger of losing back-to-back -back games before he stepped to the forefront here tonight. This was not a game he was going to let get away from him. Now here's Crawford, D right on him. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact and he'll shoot two. Crawford is very tricky. So good at drawing contact and getting chances at the line. And that one falls for Jamal Crawford. Jamal Crawford has won the sixth man of the year more times than any other player in NBA history. Just might have to name that award after him before it's all said and done. And so Jamal Crawford nails both of them. So at Chicago now, pass to Vonley. Grant kicks to Zipser. He feeds it to Valentine, doubled by Crawford. Valentine shot good. And you gotta like that they are competing all the way through. Try and maybe build some momentum going into the next one. Because the execution was not there tonight. That's something they can use this time to work on. Tremendous effort here on the road. That plane ride home is going to be sweet. They better have some extra goodies on that plane because after this blowout, they deserve to be rewarded. Zipser's shot is off. Here's Jang. And he banks in the layup. And just staying aggressive, continuing to extend that lead. They left nothing to chance. This is how you close out. Here's Grant. And so it's the Timberwolves taking care of business here. To come into an opponent's building and dominate the way they did tonight says, I think, Greg, an awful lot about this team. I, I guess they don't need home cooking to feel at <laughs> home. I mean, Kevin, just a masterful performance all the way around. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. Jimmy, you have become a star in this league, big part of the team. 
Have those expectations put more pressure on you individually? Uh, no, no pressure. I think I'm going to do what I do each and every night. I'm not going to play well every night. But I just got to focus on me, this team. Can't worry about the outside influences. A real leader, Jimmy. Thank you for your time. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David, thank you. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Steve Smith, Greg Anthony, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for being with us. So long, everyone.